Starting in the 4th millennium BCE, the many settlements across Mesopotamia began to become true cities, meaning central hubs of their societies, where the collection and redistribution of goods between the settled people in the cities and the hinterlands and the nomadic pastoralists around and all the other people could be conducted and becoming focal points of these societies, central to how they operate, not dependent on the population size, as these cities would have seemed like small towns and villages to us, with only a few thousand, maybe ten thousand people. Historians believe the first of these cities to have been Uruk, even though there were other large settlements before it, like Jericho in Palestine and Eridu near Uruk which the later people refer to as the first city. But at Uruk, we find a city which was the central to the society at this time. We find developments arise in Uruk and then later appear in the surrounding area. At Uruk, the city seemed to have been centered around its temple and the cult therein, cult referring to its religion, not as in how often people use the word cult. Now, this temple was the white temple, the precursor to the ziggurat, a temple built on top of a pedestal to the goddess Inanna. And at that temple, there was its high priest that seemed to have acted as some type of priest king for the city of Uruk. This temple was the central point, not just for their religion, but also for the gathering and storage of their goods. It collected a tax of grains, and oils, and cloth from the people inside the city, and then would redistribute them out to the people. For this collection and redistribution of goods, it developed a writing system, cuneiform, starting as proto-cuneiform, which were little pictures that were simplified images of the thing that then later became to be used as the sounds of that thing's word and then those being used to make signs for words that did not have pictorial imagery for them. They were concepts. So from that they began to write and these early documents were recording of these collecting of tribute. Like recording that so-and-so brought so many weights or measures of barley and so much cloth in their tribute. So it was brought in and that was stored of them. Then to those inside the city they would redistribute those goods to them in certain amounts of grain, barley, and oil and cloth. These goods, at least the grains, appeared to have maybe been measured out with a new type of pottery that arose, referred to as the Beverum Bowl. As previously we saw complex indicate pottery, now it comes a simple and somewhat crude, but always the same measure, bowls made on wills that were masters that seemed to be in pretty much like the Uruk cheap throwaway pottery, right? cheap throwaway dishes as we might now have papered plates. And these might have been used to measure these redistributing of the goods. And now those inside the city would have paid this, but those outside would have been disconnected from it, but would have come into the city to trade and maybe store some of their goods within the temple so that they could pull it out later in times of need, as those with goods stored inside the temple had a insurance package in case of drought or famine or some type of disaster that ruined their crops or the livelihood, so that they could bring in more. This now centralization and storage of goods allowed people to focus on specific tasks and specialize, and trade then arose more and more in these cramped, compact little cities. We also see that there were little tools used to track how much someone had of a specific good stored. These little bullions. There were clay spheres with tokens of the goods stored inside them. These would have been marked with a stamp, either from a normal stamp or a cylinder seal, which would be a seal you would roll over it, to mark that it was marked by an official of the temple that they had those goods stored there. These little bullions 
could then possibly be used in trade, where someone could go to the market, maybe where they're hearing people say, fresh fish, fresh fish, or fresh blocks of cheese, or fine twine garments, and things like that being sold in the street, and they could come and go, yes, I would like some fresh fish, I would like to buy three measures of fresh fish with two measures of barley, and someone go, two measures of barley? Four measures of barley, and then goes, no, three measures of barley, and they managed to agree three measures of barley for three measures of fish. And then he goes, well, do you have the bullions? He brings up the bullions, and they trade, because the bullions represent that. Now the merchant can go and take those bullions to the temple if he needs grain and gather that grain he just traded for. And now, if someone outside of the city came in to trade, they would have had to have still traded by directly exchanging their goods with the merchant, which would have required a bunch of checking, of the, being the right measures of stuff. In contrast, if you trade with someone inside the city, you had the measures already measured, the goods already measured by the temple and knew that it was guaranteed to be right. And this led to the growth of these cities and the growth of the dependent laborers to the cities, you know, to the temples in the cities. Even though they weren't as free to move about as those living in their hinterlands, they had the insurance of honesty and trade and insurance in case of disaster from those temples, leading them to build up closer and closer around them. They cease to grow in strength, and the Ryan become more and more detailed. And interestingly, they had different numbering systems with different items. Like you might have a sexadecimal system for measuring humans or dried fish and things like that, where you, it is in increments of 6 and 10. But a bisexual system in increments of 2 for things like cheese and fresh fish and grain products. And all these were different systems of how this period of the Uruk phenomenon operate. But oddly, during roughly the end of the 4th millennium BC, its strength died off. Other cities kind of disappeared their growing settlements, except for a few around it. But it would come back up later, and its writing of cuneiform would spread again. But it kind of just petered out at the end, 4th millennium BCE. Like and subscribe.